Apple finally gave iPadOS the upgrade we have all been waiting for. Real multitasking, floating windows, a brand new design, and the update that just might make your iPad your next computer. And it's not just for the pros. This new software update is coming to all of the iPads in the lineup, from your basic iPad all the way to my personal favorite, the iPad mini. If you're not familiar, WWDC is Apple's worldwide developers conference, and it's where they preview all the software updates that will be coming to our iPhones, our iPads, our Macs, our watches coming this fall. And this year, iPadOS quietly stole the show, or I guess not so quietly, because everyone is excited about this. I got some hands-on time with it while I was there, but I've also been playing around with the beta version on my iPad mini. So let me show you what's actually changing and whether or not your iPad might just be your next computer. Let's start with the feature that makes the biggest difference, multitasking iPad OS 26 introduces a brand new windowing system that might look pretty familiar. It's going to be very intuitive to use and you might recognize those buttons from somewhere. And if you guessed your Mac, you would be correct, which is why this makes this much more of a contender to be a Mac replacement right now. All of these windows are fully functional, fully resizable. You can really customize how you want everything to look. Those little buttons at the top, you are going to be very familiar with to minimize, to X out, to maximize your screens, to move things around. You're not locked into any particular tiling, although you do have a bunch of pre-built tiling options to lay out all of your apps just the way you want to. And this truly makes using multiple apps at the same time much more functional than I even thought that it was in the stage manager era. You can layer multiple apps like your Safari and your notes, your planner, whatever you want to do and actually resize and move things around. It is very intuitive to use and it's going to make multitasking much, much easier on an iPad. And unlike Stage Manager, this update is not just reserved for your M series iPads. It extends to all of the iPads in the current lineup. As long as you can update, you're gonna be able to have access to this multitasking window system that is going to make using your iPad so much easier. Apple also added new menus. You'll notice these up at the top of your apps and they are also very familiar and will be very intuitive and functional to use. I, for one, am very excited to be able to have more options at the click of a button. They've also updated your cursor. So instead of that kind of annoying little circle thing that we had before, we have a real pointy cursor that functions just like your Mac one does. So you can have a lot more precise control over your iPad than you were able to before, especially when it's put in something like your magic keyboard or if you're using it with a mouse. In the new windowing system, you can put windows anywhere you want, including off of the screen. It really opens up your possibilities and your options for your workflow. They've also added a bunch of tiling options that I absolutely love and some gestures that still make iPad feel magical, like iPad does, in my opinion. Instead of just using a split view, iPad OS lets you grab a window and snap it to a corner, a side, or even layer it behind another app. The tiling options are so uniquely iPad with a three window view that I guarantee are going to be a lot of people's favorites. Apple also introduced a brand new design across all devices that is so cool. This is the biggest design update we've seen since iOS 7. So a very big one and a very long time coming. And it is absolutely beautiful. They're calling it liquid glass. Everything from the widgets on your home screen to the little sliders that adjust what music you're listening to has all been updated to this really visually stunning liquid glass. And this isn't just your basic transparent UI. Everything almost has this bouncy droplet quality to it. Everything moves in an organic way. You can see light reflecting on every single piece from the sliders to the windows. You're gonna notice a huge, huge difference. And it is visually very, very impressive. Every little window and slider has this dynamic movement baked right in, rainbowing in the corners to make it look like it's really reflective and there's a fluidity to every single slider and button you touch. And the update gives you a lot more options for customization that really makes your devices feel fresh and new. And not only did your default icons get a bit of an update, so did your dark mode and we have some new options as well. I'm usually admittedly a dark mode hater, but it is absolutely stunning with all of the new glass-like effects. Your default has very familiar colorings that you're going to be used to and they've added a brand new clear option that I've seen a lot of mixed reviews on, but I personally will be using myself. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. All of your icons have this like seamless, clear, transparent look and everything is just done in my opinion so well. You can also tint your icons, but this time you don't have to just do it in dark mode. You're able to toggle between light and dark. So you can really get this looking exactly the way you want to. 
And no matter how you feel about clear icons, the nice thing here is that there really are options for everyone and you can make this look exactly the way you want to without having to use like a bunch of shortcuts to make app covers and things like that. Folders and organization in general got a really big update that's going to work really seamlessly with all the new multitasking options. We got an update to the Files app with a list view that allows users to see more of the document details in resizable columns and in collapsible folders. Folders got a really cool new update too with folder customization. You can actually change the color and even add an emoji or symbol right directly on your folder. And these aren't just cute, they actually correspond to a tag so you can look things up by color and actually color code digitally if you want to. To be honest with you, this is one I am very excited for myself. I love to color code pretty much everything. So I am going to go in there and color code all of my folders. You can also change the default color. So you know how we have this standard blue that we've been using forever. You can change that to whatever color you want. So even if you don't want to color code and you just want to customize, you can do it in a much easier way than the way we were going about it in the past. And on iPad, you can now drag your folders directly into your dock and they're totally functional from there. So you're able to click on them and they will fan out just like they do on your MacBook. And you're able to drag files so easily into whatever project you're using, or even just to send emails much easier. A lot of people are going to use this for their downloads folder, but really the sky's the limit. You can organize your iPad however you want and accessing your files are going to be easier than ever. And speaking of functional updates, another one that I'm really happy to see come to iPad are background tasks. So if you're doing a long task, like say exporting a video from Final Cut, you don't have to wait in the load screen anymore. It will be a background task that'll just take up a small amount of space up at the top of your screen and you can move on to whatever else you wanna do, whether that's writing an email or whatever you wanna do, watch a video, play a game, and it will export as a little background task so you don't have to wait. This is amazing. I'm gonna get so much use out of this and I hope we see this brought to iPhone one day soon too. They've also brought over the journal app and it is fully functional with Apple Pencil. I think a lot of people are going to love this. I love this app on my phone and on my iPad, this is even better. It feels even more natural to use with a pencil and you're able to get really reflective. You still get the same prompts and it is still a very, very secure system. So I think a lot of people are going to like this new app. They've also added the preview app from Mac to your iPad as well. So it's going to be a lot easier to mark up files and view them. The calculator now has 3D graph capabilities in math notes and they've added a new read pen to the tool palette to support a traditional calligraphy experience. And I'm really just scratching the surface here. There are a bunch of new features like some Apple intelligence features that allow you to live translate in both your messages and your FaceTimes, new options to choose your audio source and get studio quality recording with the new local capture feature. And I'm just really excited to see so many new functional updates come to the iPad. I for one, am really happy to see a bunch of these functional practical updates come to iPad. I think it's going to make my personal user experience a lot better. And I can see that being true for a lot of people as well. I personally have never been in the position where just my iPad would be enough to run my entire business, my entire workflow, I still need to use my MacBook, but we are getting very, very, very close. Honestly, the only reason I can't go just iPad is because there are softwares that are Mac specific. So certain creative softwares specifically for me are only available on Mac and that's why I need to use a Mac still. Even things like Final Cut Pro that's available on both, the app on my iPad is not the same as the desktop version. So I need to be able to have a Mac to use those things. But it's not that the functionality, especially now with that new cursor and that new multitasking capability, it's not that the functionality is not there. So I I could see a time in the future where I could get away with just using my iPad. And I think at this point for many people who aren't creative professionals, you might be able to do that right now. And I'm curious if that's you. Right now we're just in the developer beta version. So I am playing around. The public beta will be available in July and I'm happy to talk about this more as it develops. So let me know what are you most interested in? What are you curious about? What are you excited for? And how can I help you get the most use out of your iPad? Because that is what I'm here for. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It helps out this little channel so much and I will catch you later. Bye. The gentle April rain that stays